So today we are going to look at the five head coaches in MLS that I think are most likely going to be the first to be fired this season. And, you know, I talked about this before where I was going to do a video looking at some of these head coaches that are definitely on the hot seat right now because we are now almost a third into the season. In fact, some teams are already one third in the season and some teams have already played 11 games so far this year. And I think it is a pretty good measuring stick now that we are this deep into the season where it really started to have a reflection of what each team's season is having. And I know for a lot of these teams that are not having a great season right now, whether they believe that, yeah, it's a bad season because we were expected to be bad, or for teams that are expected to be good and have expectation of making the playoffs and they came nowhere near that, that's where you started to see some of the, those teams might most likely are going to be teams that have their head coaches that being far or even more shake up in terms of the front office and even in the ownership. But that being said, let us begin with number one. And by the way, this is not really a ranking. I originally was thinking about doing a ranking in terms of, of looking at these five head coaches and the one that I think most likely are going to be the one that gets fired. But I, I decided that, you know what, I'm just going to do, do what I always do, which is just kind of a list instead of doing kind of a ranking system. But that being said, let us actually begin with number one. And at number one, it is going to be Chris Armis. Now, for Chris Armis, I know a lot of TFC fans have demanded him to, to be fired from the TFC front office. And, you know, yes, things have definitely not gone well for Toronto. And, you know, this start of the season is something that not many people were expected to do, especially with the talent that they had. Now, I will give TFC and give... Chris Armas kind of a benefit of the doubt the fact that you know he's been dealing with a lot of injuries with his teams and especially some of those big starters that that they had in the the big money kind of players that they have in, in their squad have not been available for majority of the game that obviously is go going to to be a pro problem now at the same time you know some will also say that that of course is not a reliable excuse and in some way it's they, they people will say that well you look at other teams that are missing big name players and they're still do, doing very well and you know I've said before that that is kind of the issue with TFC right now where if they don't have their their big name player if they don't have the likes of Soteldo or even Pozuelo in that starting 11 this team simply cannot operate what whatsoever and you kind of also sense that maybe this might be finally the year that they started to get rid of some of their old core core pieces because when you look at this team there's still a lot of players on that team that is part of that main core that won won the the championship back in 2017 and was part of the golden years of tfc a couple of years ago but as they're now getting started to get a little bit older you just feels like maybe there should be some dismantling in terms of that core and they need to kind of bring in some fresh fresh new players and to the, their credit they have done that with a couple of big signing thing recently but still, you know, I think, as what people would say, I don't think injuries should be the main excuse why Chris Armas hasn't done well with, with this team. And again, it's clear that he is clearly underachieving with this team. And, you know, TFC is also a team, especially their fan base, with how much success that they've been, been have for the past couple of years. It's not surprising the fact that a lot of them have very high expectation with this team and right now with the way that not only Chris Armas have not delivered that high expectation but even barely meeting these high expectations and completely underachieving it's understandable why this TFC f uh, fan base want him to be out now the other thing I will also say why maybe Chris Armas not might not be the first one to go is the fact that he is a first year head coach for TFC and one thing I know about first year head coach in this league is that they don't usually get fired this quick into the season like I don't even remember last time there's been a first-year head coach that's been fired this long in the season. I mean, the only one that I remember might have been Alan Koch when he was fired with FC Cincinnati after 11 games. But Alan Koch was with FC Cincinnati before, so it's not like he was a first-year head coach with FC Cincinnati, but more like a first-year head coach in a brand new league. And I even kind of, in some way, question that that move because I feel like. Yes, I know FC Cincinnati saw what LAFC and Atlanta did and had some high expectation in the ex in their expansion year, but we knew that that was just unrealistic. And that I've said before that what we saw from Atlanta and LAFC in the expansion year is something that expansion side don't don't do often. And I feel like maybe FC Cincinnati might have been a little bit highly 
really had that high expectation and they just immediately fire Alan Koch because they, they clearly are not meeting that expectation, even though I, I feel like he should get should give him more time. I mean, you look at right now with Austin FC, who right now, if you look at Austin FC record, their record is kind of almost similar to what FC Cincinnati record was in their first 10 game. And I don't hear any Austin FC fans are saying Josh Wolf should be, be out of this team so yeah first year head coach they usually get the benefit of the doubt and really the only one i do remember last time that a first year head coach immediately got fired from from his position is is my coach starhey for for the quakes and even even starhey didn't actually get fired until september so yeah you know i I just think first year head coach usually get more of a leash and not to mention the fact that that chris armis you know he he of course was hired from a front office that used to hire him with the red bulls and you know obviously he's good friends with ali curtis and i just think that there's no way that this this front office is is really want to to fire one of the guy that they knew knew that they want to bring him here because they know he was he was successful in the previous club that i bought him here so he's probably going to be successful with the club that i am now now currently in but i'm going to bring it from from the previous one so yeah I, I, that's a couple of reasons why chris armas i don't think could be the first to leave fire but there's reason why there could be the case where he could be the first to let go now at number two i am going to say mark dos santos now for mark dos santos this is an interesting one because you know for mark dos santos this is the second year in charge of the white cap so we can't use that excuse that this is his first year and it's gonna take time and you know for or no this is not his second year this is the third year with the white caps because i forgot he, he was hired back in 2019 and you know last year there was definitely some progress that we saw in terms of this deep rebuild that they've been going through in these last couple of years but this year with the way that they kind of gone in a free fall it feels like they're going backwards in terms of their progress. Now, that being said, we are still early in, in the season. And maybe Marco Santos can turn this team team around and start to, to get this team back to the progress that they are going through this long rebuild. But I can also understand why some Whitecaps fans want Dos Santos to be fired. Because you know, the results are not showing, even though though the squad is definitely get, getting much better. And, you know, again, the only reason why maybe maybe Dos Santos might not be the first one to be out is that if he can definitely turn this around, then I think think most likely he's not going to be fired. And also the fact that, you know, this white cap ownership and front office has, hasn't really had a history of usually really fire head coach in a very, very, very lethal kind of manner. I mean, remember when Carl Robinson and how every white caps fan demand Carl Robinson to get get out of the team and it only took until till Robertson really run that team to the ground for them to kind of had no choice in terms of firing their head coach so in other words they don't enjoy in terms of firing their head coach it t- tends to be more lenient and give their head coach more more time rather than just immediately they they fu- fire them and the other reason why maybe dos santos might not be fired is the expectation that the whitecaps had isn't really as high as what you see some of these other teams that i'm going to talk about have actually have good expectation i mean they do have the expectation of maybe being a fringe playoff team and see progress in this long rebuild but this is not like tfc where the the expectation is you have to be near the top part of the of the conference and you have to be an mls cup contender so maybe that might be a reason why marco santos is get get getting more time because there isn't that unrealistic expectation that that the fans and also the, the front office put put toward him but yeah, things have definitely not looked well right now. And, you know, if this bad run continued for the Whitecaps, I won't be surprised if Dos, Dos Santos could be be the one that could get the, the axe. But at number three, I am going to say Raphael Wiki. And i got to make sure I, I spell his name correctly. And if I didn't, I do apologize for that. But, yeah, for Raphael Wiki, you know, this is the second year for the Chicago Fire. And I kind of said this last year with Raphael Wiki where, you know, I'm going to give his first year the benefit of the doubt because, you know, his first year he come into a new team that is basically kind of like an expansion team. Like last year, the Chicago Fire with a new rebrand uh, and a kind of a new name and also moving back to Soldier Field. And add to the fact that they also had to deal with the pandemic and the stop and go situation. And also pretty much their star 11 is just completely new because they made tons of signing last year. I I thought they were kind of like an expansion team and as i mentioned with expansion team usually they don't do well in 
their their first year now in the second year that's when things some expansion team does start to go through an improvement but unfortunately for this fire team they're going backwards in terms of of what what they're supposed to feel like and you know there's some fire fans that were hoping that this new ownership can really get them back to the glory day some will say that they should be maybe contending for for the eastern conference and when you look at the team they do have some talent in their their team and they definitely have have enough talent that i think could definitely be a playoff team but the problem is you know it's been a combination of bad luck and also there's been some 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 kind of there there's just kind of some boneheaded kind of play that the fire ha have done this season and this is something that is not new because that was the case last year where there could be times where they could look look good in a game but they just made some boneheaded plays that would cause them to give up a goal and all of a sudden now they're, they're behind the eight ball and it just feels like it's the same case this time but it's also because of the un unlucky factor where, you know, there's just some games where they play really well, but they just cannot put the ball into the back of the net because, you know, they can't finish. Or, you know, unfortunately, they hit the post a couple of times. You know, in the last game, I think they hit the post twice against the Union. And you would, and then, of course, there was that unfortunate own goal that gave the, the Union the, the equalizer, which you would, it was really, truly an, an unfortunate situation. So... Yeah, I mean, this is also another difficult one where we'll see whether or not how long will Raphael Wiki has with this team. I mean, right now, with the way that the Fire are right now sitting at the bottom of the Eastern Conference and actually now leading the wooden spoon spot, you just think that he Wiki probably is not going to last very long if he's going to continue to stuck into that spot because there's no way in the world with this new ownership and just with the players that he has and the talent that this team has should be a wooden wooden spoon type of team like we're seeing something similar to what we saw saw with the fire a couple of years ago and i just don't think this was supposed to be the case and now you just kind of ask you know if this is the situation then the first person that probably is going to be responsible for this is definitely going to be the, the the coaching and why wiki is not getting the best out of his players right now but now at number four i am going to say mateus almeida now today there was a breaking news well, it's not really a breaking news, but it happens this morning where it was announced that Jesse Fornelli has been fired from the San Jose Earthquakes. So for those of you that don't know who Jesse Fornelli is, he's the general manager for the San Jose Earthquakes, but he's been fired uh, this this morning. And, you know, we kind of expected that there was going to be some, some changes in terms of, of the front office or even maybe the the ownership or even some coaching changes because after that embarrassing loss against the galaxy you just feel like that's the last straw and that there's got to be something that has has to be changed and if there's any dignity left in this team to show to the fans they have to do something in terms of changing some of the personnel and indeed they decided to fire jesse fornelli this this morning and you know for me my opinions in terms of that and actually you know i'm going to save my opinion in terms of talking about that in the news of the week episode because i'll talk about that again in the news of the week episode tomorrow but you know for for me you know you know with now now the quakes looking for a new gm you know they they've also said said after when they fired jesse fornelli that they're still committed to Mateus Almeida and maybe that might be the reason why Almeida isn't under as hot as a seat as some people would say I mean I know some Quakes fans have said that they want to see Almeida to leave and he he, he hasn't really done done a great job with, with the Quakes mainly because he's brought a lot of these guys that he know knows and play for and and it just doesn't seem like that of course of course has been a recipe for them them to do well this season and not to mention the the tactics that he's been using and that he just feels like he, he's live and die of that man marking system and the the fact that there hasn't really been a lot of adjustment in terms of the man marking system and how every team literally have figured out the man marking system that Almeida has been using he hasn't changed that that's also just proved his stu stubbornness and kind of proves the frustration in terms of the Quakes fans of saying you know, if something is not working, then you got to change. Like what Almeida is doing right now is literally the definition of it, of insanity. So, yeah, you know, maybe that that is kind of one of the reasons why a lot of fans want him to f be fired. But again, maybe the reason why he probably won't get fired anytime soon is because the Quakes have just said that they are are likely to stick with him. Now that being said, you know that's only just just words that they basically said. And, you know, we also seen before where when a GM basically got fired and then they replaced him with a new 
new GM, you know, that new GM could be more scrutinized toward the, the head coach. And maybe Jesse Fornelli and Almeida had a really good relationship where it just feel like Fornelli was never going to be, never going to fire, fire Mateus Almeida. But now with Fornelli no longer the GM of this team and they decided to bring in a new GM. And let's say that new GM are really going to be the one that are, are hoping the Quakes is going to win and actually have that expectation where fans were expecting this team which is only be a playoff team but also a team that at least win one or two playoff games and they're seeing that this team is is clearly heading into to the wrong direction of that and heading into that 2018 kind, kind of direction I won't be surprised if that GM is thinking about out firing Almeida so that could be also another thing that could could happen but as of now it just feels like the Quakes at least with all the personnel that they currently have, they just feels like there's just no interest in terms of firing Mateus Almeida right now. But now at number five, it is going to be Phil Neville. Now for Phil Neville, I'm going to kind of use what I said about Chris Armas, where, you know, as bad as this hiring was and how I really was confused at first when they, when Inter Miami decided to get, get Phil Neville, he is still going to get the benefit of the doubt that this is, his first year with the team and usually we don't see head coaches that basically get fought in their their first year year this early into the season unless something terribly has gone wrong or if there's something that he's says that that could be ra racial truly or homophobic lately then yeah that could be another way where he he could could potentially be fired or maybe be be resigned but you know you know the one thing i will say about about that as kind of Kind of the benefit of the doubt is that you know he's definitely going to not get as much benefit of the doubt that he's a he's a first year head coach for Inter Miami than it is with Chris Armas. And what I'm trying to say about that is the fact that you know I feel like Phil Neville is definitely in a more hotter seat than what what Chris Armas is mainly because you know unlike Chris Armas, at least he gets not only the benefit of the doubt that he is a first year head coach with the team, but also what. But he, you know, he has has the the front office that clearly backs him to be the guy with the team. I don't think that's the case with Phil Neville, and I know David Beckham has said before that he is kind of the right guy to do so. But don't be surprised if some personnel in that front office, or even guys like Jorge Mas and all the all those uh, ownership or all those front office like Chris H Henderson, they they'll just say that he might not be be the the right guy to do. Do so, and I know for a fact that when Chris Henderson arrived to this team, he—I don't think he was expecting Phil Neville was actually going to be their main head coach. In fact, I don't think it was Henderson the one that appointed Phil Neville as the head coach. I think it was either David Beckham or Jorge Mas the ones to do so. So, yeah, you know, with Henderson knowing the fact that he's come from from a, a team that has a rich history of winning, that is the Seattle Sounders. I won't be surprised that he's clearly seen that things are not working out out right now with with this team and he wants to get this team to the level that that he, he hope he he did with the seattle sounders you know you might think about firing phil neville and also with a lot of these head coach that i list here on the here on this list he's another head coach that a lot of fans have not not been very happy about like a lot of people have demand neville to be be fired from from this team and i'm kind of also been one of those people even though i'm not a fan of Inter Miami because I've said before from day one, I feel like this is gonna end it disastrously because you you look at Neville's background as as a head coach like the only head coaching job he has done was with the England women's national team and he hasn't re and he he also have a lot of critics in terms of the tactics that he's been using for the England's women's national team. Now the thing that I haven't seen Phil Neville has done at as what I was thinking he did during his time with the England women's national team is that he's been very obnoxious when he, he is answering these media questions. And so far, he hasn't done, done that, which I think that's good for him to, to not do do that. And maybe that is one way that he might earn more time with Inter Miami. Because if you're being kind of obnoxious with the, the media and stuff like that, that's not going to play any favor toward, toward the media. And now you, you got pressure from from both the the front office the the fans and also the media that might want you to get out of of the team but you know that that being said when you look at some of the tactics that Phil Neville has been used for Inter Miami just makes no sense whatsoever and 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 it just feels like feels like he is almost as clueless as what what Diego 
So was doing his time with Inter Miami, and you might even say it could be worse than what it is because at least Diego Alonso, at times, he's been able to get resort with this team, team, but it has kind of been inconsistent with Phil Neville. Right now, this team is just—it's literally a sinking ship right now. With with this is really the first time we've seen Inter Miami have gone into this bad of a run. I mean, even in their first year when they were not very good, at least they were being inconsistent. That, that was the reason why they weren't good. Now it's just that they're just a sinking ship right now. And with a fan base that have already have a lot of high ex expectation, a sinking ship and a fans with ha high expectation doesn't usually lead to good good things. And may, most of the time would lead to a lot of fan base, unsurprisingly, are calling for Phil Neville's head. So, yeah, that might be the reason why I think Phil Neville is co is going to be one of the coach that most likely could be fired. And heck, if I would do a rankings in it in terms of the system, uh, I think this would be backwards in terms of the fact that Phil Neville would be the one most likely to be fired. Then you got Almeida, then you got Raphael Wicke, then you got Mark Dos Santos, and then you got Chris Armas as the the coach that most likely could be fired. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think of this list? And if there's any coach that you think could potentially make on this list? I mean, there definitely are some coaches that could potentially end up on, on this list too. But if there's anyone that that I didn't put here on the board. Let me know in the comments below. But if there's any coach that I, you, you saw here that you agree, agree with or you disagree with, let me know in the comments also. But until then, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button. And also, you know, I really hope that eventually none of these head coach have to be fired because let's be honest, you never like to see a head coach being fired with a team. I mean, I know sometimes as a fan, you w want to, to, to your team to do the best and sometimes a head coaching change has to be be something that maybe could could turn your fortune of the season but at the same time it's it's always kind of sad when you see a head coach being fired because a head coach getting fired is kind of like the same thing of of people losing losing their jobs and i don't think anyone would be happy anytime when when you you see see someone just kind of lo lose lose their their job that they've been been a long time part of it although i think because of the nature of, of this industry and in terms of the fact that you know fans they expect a lot of their teams and and they feel like maybe a head coaching change is the only way to make things better maybe they don't have that kind of same feeling as what some people would say oh you know he just lost his job and i'm not just going to show any sympathy whatsoever but either way i uh, hope you guys enjoy this video and yeah i of course will see you guys next time